Hello my friends, I'm out here in the garden doing some uh, harvesting of peas and just general maintenance, getting ready for my evening watering. And I was just thinking, you know, uh, if I could only grow a few things, or what are the most essential things I would grow? So I made a little list, a top five list, of what you might want to consider in a survival situation or even for a sustainable garden. Uh, maybe you're a new gardener and want easy things to grow. Or maybe you don't want to rely on buying seeds every year. But I made a short list <clears throat> and these are things that are easy to reseed, uh, productive, uh, some some of them can be grown in uh, any soil condition and uh, <clears throat> are all nutritious of course and everything but uh, the list may not be what you expect and uh, watching other lists uh, it's definitely a little bit different but let's get started uh, here are my top five uh, things to grow in in a regular garden or your post-apocalyptic survival Prepper's garden, whatever, a lot of people are concerned about what's going on, but even if you're not, this may still be useful or interesting. And of course, I always welcome uh, comments or <laughs> your thoughts on it. Maybe you think uh, I'm totally out to lunch and uh, you think some of these things aren't very good to uh, depend on for surviving or sustaining your garden from year to year. But uh, let's give it a go and see how it goes. I'd love to hear whatever you have to say about it. Number five on my list, <clears throat> or number one, depending on which way you look at it, is potatoes. Now, uh, potatoes can be grown straight in the ground, in raised beds, or as you see here, in containers. They grow in virtually any soil type. They do like acidic soil. The alkaline soils will cause uh, bacteria to grow on the skin and you'll see uh, some scabbing and stuff. But they're a very hardy, uh, very hardy thing to grow, uh, short of uh, planting them in a bog during uh, the rainy season. Uh, you shouldn't uh, get blight or anything like that. Uh, loose well draining soil and they'll do just fine but if you're in a tight squeeze and you have to plant some food you can simply dig a hole in the ground and drop a potato in there. It, it will grow. Or half a potato. You only have a few you can cut them. Uh, let it scab over for 24 hours and then plant them. Uh, very versatile that's why they're on my list. Uh, it's high in starch. You get a lot of energy from eating potatoes. They're very easy to store. I had one uh, in the fridge that <clears throat> was an odd shape, so I never peeled it, and it got left there literally uh, two years. I believe it was, yes, yeah, two years in the fridge, and uh, I threw it in the ground and it grew. So for a survival crop or something easy to start with when uh, gardening, just something that uh, you don't have to put a lot of effort in, in either growing it, harvesting it, or storing it. They're easy to store. I simply uh, brush off all the dirt, throw them in a Tupperware bin with a lid, you know, a big plastic bin, and put them in a garage. <clears throat> I still have some in a bin right now that I can plant out there. But uh, yeah, great crop for surviving. Uh, high in calories, lots of starch, lots of ways to cook it, it's enjoyable. So that's where I'll start this list, potatoes. Number four is corn. Corn's on this list primarily because you can make flour out of it. Now if you don't have access to a grocery store or for whatever reason uh, maybe you're off grid and you want to make your own flour this is a great alternative. Uh, it's easy to do. Uh, one cob of corn produces a lot of seed so this is an easy to propagate crop. You get good germination 
from the seeds you dry yourself. It's a good source of starch, like potatoes. Good source of energy, good source of calories. And uh, while it's not uh, the easiest thing to grow, it is a little finicky, it's a heavy feeder. Other things on the list uh, you'll see will help that. So coming at number four, primarily because you can make flour out of it, and that's a sustainable feature to having this in your garden. Uh, no matter what the what happens or what the world has in store for us, uh, you, you can always have bread. And I think that's important, so that's why I included it. So number four is corn. So number three is beans and peas. What you're looking at here is snap peas. They grow pretty tall. These ones actually grew about I don't know, seven, eight feet, and then uh, started falling over. The snap peas are very productive. You can eat the whole, you can eat the whole shell. They're easy to get seed from. Just leave some on the vine, tear the vine out at the root, hang it upside down, let them dry, or take them off, take them in the house, let them dry, plant them next year, and you'll have uh, more. So it's easy to propagate. Uh, depending on what kind of pea it is, you get a lot from them. This is Scarlet Runner Beans. They're growing up a trellis. Probably already 10, good 10 feet high up there. And they were only just started, so... This is a good producer, produces a large bean. Beans and peas are nitrogen fixing. So, as I said before with the corn, if you don't have the greatest soil or you don't have the amendments available or you don't know how to amend soil and your corn needs some extra nitrogen you can just plant uh, beans which will use the stock of the corn to grow up anyways makes a bit of a mess to harvest but it's good for the corn and good for the beans so it's a what I think is the essential crop yeah this is a uh, pole bean variety of pole bean makes beautiful flowers on it too you have here it's more of a bush bean these are highly productive beans all these little flowers you see everywhere are going to turn into beans uh, they don't grow too high you don't need a trellising system you can plant them very densely they like that in fact they use each other for support so it's a so it's a high yield crop it doesn't take a lot of room to grow Here's your regular sweet peas. These aren't the highest yielding crop for the amount of room they take to grow. But they're very easy to collect seed from, very reliable. And you can get two crops a season. You can get one in the spring. You plant early in the spring. And you can get one if you plant for the fall. Uh, depending on where you live, it's usually successful. But yeah, number three would be your nitrogen fixing legumes. Alright, so number two on the list. This one's very important, especially if you live in a northern climate like I do here in uh, north central Alberta. Is berries. Some sort of uh, fruit crop. Something that is uh, high in vitamin C and citric acid if you can right we, we don't grow oranges here you know i wish you know i'd love to have a fresh peach when i came out to the garden but uh, the reality is uh, this far up north you rely on the grocery stores for most of that stuff so to be self-sustainable or to have to live in an off-grid situation or you know an emergency where you, you're relying on growing your own food. Something, uh, something high in vitamin C, something with some citric acid in it, something that'll prevent you from getting scurvy over the long winters. And uh, sounds kind of funny, but uh, without it, uh, yeah, I don't think it would be too funny. <laughs> but yeah, well, this is just uh, my hascap bush. But uh, there's lots of wild berries. They grow in whatever area you live. So it's good to get to know the wild stuff. But it's also good to have stuff on your own property. 
So pick something you enjoy, something that grows good in your area. The bush you're looking at here, the Haskap berries, they're kind of like a, they're kind of like a blueberry. They're very soft texture, uh, very easy to eat. A little bit acidic, depending on the variety of plant. Some are a little bit more bitter, and some are more sweet. Made into jams or pies. Uh, they are very tasty. I like eating them just straight off the plant. But they do give you a little, like yeah, a Sour Patch Kid, you know, it's a little bit sour. And then it hits you with the sweet. I love them. Um, they're easy to preserve. You can dry, you can dry berries. You can make berries into wine, which is a way of preserving them. Uh, you of course jams. Um, with electricity, you can you can freeze them, of course. But I think it's essential uh, if you are planning a uh, off-grid, you know, uh, homestead, or you're planning for grid down, or uh, the cost of fresh fruit and berries. Uh, is too much for you. It's good to have some bushes. Northern climate, I like these. These are uh, pretty hands-free as far as maintenance. They taste really good. You get a good yield and uh, they're very reliable. Um, <clears throat> they don't seem to expire either. I think their lifetime is much longer than mine. So berries, some sort of fruit. You know, if you have some apple trees, even the sour ones, sour cherries or sour uh, crab apples you know in a survival situation uh, that that vitamin C and that citric acid will be essential so number two on my list will have to be you know some sort of berry shrub your choice um, something that's a, a, a woody shrub is probably preferable to something like strawberries or something a little bit more reliable a little bit more um, hardy through winters but they're easy to propagate also. As you see here in the camera, this is some air layering I'm doing to propagate the plant. It's basically like taking a cutting, but instead of having the cutting root on its own, the cutting is rooting inside this ball, uh, still supported by the mother plant. So when I remove it, I, I don't have to trim off any, any uh, of the leaves. I basically will have a separate plant with roots um, also, you don't need this to propagate it, right? They will propagate by ripened berry. The seeds will grow into a plant, or you just take a cutting. Uh, most of these woody uh, herbaceous, I believe it's called, um, fruit-bearing shrubs are uh, very easy to propagate. You can even just uh, lean down uh, a branch onto the ground I cover it with soil and in a few weeks to a month uh, you'll have grown roots so they're very easy to propagate again everything on this list is and uh, yeah vitamin C you know prevent prevent scurvy throw some berries and that's number two so the potatoes the corn your legumes and some fresh fruit and berries uh, that covers your calories, your vitamins and minerals, and is in itself pretty good nutrition. Now, of course, uh, I don't grow just uh, a few things. I grow a variety of things, and uh, it's, it's like building a house, right? You start with something, and then you keep adding more. Uh, any basic gardener can grow the things I've mentioned up till now and for the number one spot once your nutrition is taken care of I believe it's important to have something of medicinal value now uh, there are many many things uh, that are growing all around you wild or in your garden already that have medicinal properties but there are certain medicines that I think uh, we all rely on sometimes 
certain medicines that are important to get work done. And uh, one of those medicines is, of course, a pain reliever. Now, uh, most people think of the original pain reliever as aspirin. Um, before aspirin was patented and uh, commonly made from harvesting willow bark, uh, this plant was already known for at least a hundred years as having the same properties. It has a very high level of salicylic acid, which is what makes uh, willow bark and also to some extent birch a pain reliever. It is the primary ingredient in aspirin. But unlike taking aspirin, where aspirin causes intestinal and stomach uh, irritation and bleeding every time you take it, by the way. Uh, this plant also is a medicine for your digestion. And what it does is reinforce your mucous membranes. It is also a detoxifier of the kidneys and liver. It is all around a uh, very healthy plant. And this plant is called Meadowsweet. It is also called, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Queen of the Meadow. Right? Queen of the Prairie is a variety you can get. But I chose this over any other medicinal herb or plant uh, simply because it has uh, no known uh, side effects. So by putting this in a video, if you go out and drink some meadow sweet tea, um, you're not going to get sick or have some issues that are a problem, right? Because uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to give medical advice. But I have used this myself. It tastes wonderful in a tea. You simply dry the leaves. Once it flowers, you can dry the flowers. Uh, this is one of the, if not the oldest ingredient in the oldest fermented beverage known to man, in mead. Its name in Old English is mead wort, which is a beneficial uh, herb or root. Right, is what wort means. So it's beneficial to mead. It has a wonderful, pleasant taste. Um, I'm really partial to iced teas, the cold sweet tea, and actually brewing a tea with this uh, reminds me of that flavor a lot, even when it's hot. It's very pleasant. Um, it is very high in salicylic acid, as I mentioned, so it is a pain reliever. It's not like uh, many other plants, you know, like even dandelions have, to some extent have <clears throat> the capability of relieving some pain, or at least inflammation. This is also anti-inflammatory and high in antioxidants also. It it's a real super herb. It uh, grows as weed uh, in all, all across the wor world in the northern hemisphere as far as I know. Uh, I don't know uh, south of the equator. There's probably varieties that grow there also. But uh, it's very beneficial. It's very easy to propagate. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but you can see all tiny leaves everywhere. You can simply cut one of these and place it in the ground. It will grow. That one's been broken off, and I may just do that. And it's very easy to propagate. It's not a very demanding thing to grow. Uh, it can be used as a decorative plant, as a beautiful flower. It can be used, uh, again, in wine and mead making. So its medicinal properties can be preserved in mead. Its medicinal properties can be preserved in a tincture or an extract, or simply just by drying it, and then using it again in a tea, or using the dried herb in a wine or, or mead again. But I think it'd be very important if you can't get access to the pharmacy, and you're in pain, and you have work to do, or you won't eat, right? Like today I'm harvesting my peas. If I was in too much pain to work, I could drink a cup or two of uh, some meadow sweet tea and uh, get the work done and survive.
So that's why it went to number one on my list. But again, like when I started the video, I said, you know, number five could be number one, and um, any of these things could be replaced with, with other things that people feel are more important or uh, grow better in your area or more available. But I think it's important to have your starches, to have all your vitamins and minerals covered, to have a hardy growing plant that's easy to take seed from. There's lots of plants that are growing that are good for you that I could say, oh, this is super food, you know, this is great for you. Um, even simple things like carrots. Uh, you plant some carrots in the summer, you're not going to get seeds that fall. Uh, they're biannual, so a, a lot of plants are more difficult to collect seed from. Whereas potatoes, you simply save the potatoes and use them. Uh, the peas, you, you let them dry out. The beans, you let them dry out. The corn, you let it dry out. All the individual uh, peas or uh, kernels of corn, they're all seeds. They're easy to plant. They're pretty forgiving uh, no matter what depth you put them in. And uh, yeah, generally uh, successful for even new beginner gardeners. You don't have to be a master gardener to grow food to survive. But this plant, please don't overlook it. You know, I say corn, potatoes, beans, hey, everyone's, yeah, yeah, we already know that. We all already know that. But this is probably a plant you don't already know. It's also found wild everywhere. So um, it loves wet areas, so along river banks, streams, it loves the meadow, right? It's called Queen of the Meadow for a reason. You can even take over a, a meadow. So you can find it in abundance in the wild if you know what to look for. The leaves are kind of like a, uh, kind of like a little maple leaf. This is a, a special variety with the red veins in it. The wild ones uh, will not have that. Sometimes they'll have like a white vein. But there's different varieties depending on your region. But again, it grows all around the world. You know, it's growing in Siberia, it's growing in Norway, it's growing in England, Ireland, you know, across Canada, United States. Um, you know, it grows in Japan. It grows everywhere, right? And uh, it really does cure a headache. I'm convinced that's why it was used in mead, right? You drink drinking alcohol, uh, it avoids the hangover. Right? It's one of the oldest ingredients used in that. And that was used for thousands of years as medicine. So if you have an opportunity to grow one thing, this was on my list of essential plants to buy this summer because I'm worried too, right? You know, if I can't get a, a you know, a over-the-counter pain reliever, uh, I got one right here growing in my garden. And it's easy enough to collect the leaves and dry them and keep it in a jar over winter. It makes lots of leaves. Once I get this in the ground, it, it will pop. It will be everywhere. It grows quite tall. I think it's a hybrid that grows a little shorter and produces uh, pink flowers, but that uh, has nothing to do with surviving. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's my list. I'd really love to hear uh, what you think about it, uh, what your list is or what you would grow, uh, what's the importance of uh, your starches and your vitamins and your minerals. Um, you know, avoiding scurvy, having something for medicine. But yeah, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing what anyone has to say in the comments. But if you liked this video, found it at all interesting or helpful, or even just entertaining, uh, please subscribe. I'd love to have more friends uh, join me on this journey, and I have a lot to offer. But uh, yeah. Give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends if you want, but I uh, hope you have a great day wherever you are, whenever you watch this, peace.